So let's discuss IDW Comics Star Trek Discovery Captain Saru One Shot. This is a comic cover dated February 2019. It is written by Kirsten Beyer and Mike Johnson with art by Angel Hernandez. Now this story takes place after the events of Season 1 of Discovery, but before the arrival of the Enterprise. So it's actually, we're going back in time okay. a little bit from where we're currently watching Discovery. Overall, what did you think about the comic? I thought it was a good story. Um, I don't think we really learned more about Saru. No, I think the show reveals more about him. Mm-hmm. But uh, but it was a good story, and, and seeing him in command for the first time, that was that was nice. Yeah, so the premise of the story is, all right, the Klingon War, obviously the Discovery, the ship, has gotten some damage. It's in for repairs. The crew is on shore leave. And we're seeing different aspects of the crew. Sylvia Tilly. And even makes references to the novel that focused on Tilly. About how she grew up, her family, on a medical ship. Yes. Which was that's they great. mention her father's ship in this. Yeah, I like the aspect, the fact that they're taking the novels and they're making references in the comics and tying it into the TV show. Because we love the entire expanded Star Trek universe as well. So anytime we see some interplay there, that that's always wonderful to see. That they're they're trying to keep things in line, even in things that are not quote unquote canon. Yeah, tie ins are awesome. I mean we we're reading these comics because we enjoy the stories and but it's great that they tie into the novels and, and whatever they tie into the show. And they're giving some insight of the other characters, how they're they're taking breaks from things. And the whole premise is, well, now they're going to let Soru run the Discovery and go to this medical ship. And he's going to do a a short run, pick up Tilly, and then come back. So it's almost like a primer of what it's going to be like in the captain's chair. He has to be able to take control of the ship and be able to hopefully do something without incident. But of course, Mm -hmm. this is Star Trek. Nothing happens without incident. Well, wasn't this story he, um, it, it was unexpected that they have to, that they, there was another ship that doesn't report in, so they have mm-hmm. to go and see what, what happened to it. And so it was unexpected because a lot of the crew isn't even there. They've gone to uh, visit their families. They're on shore leave. That's right. So it's not even a full roster. So it's going to be a test to him to maximize the crew members that are on the ship. Uh, one thing that, that I like in the story was Saru with, with Michael Burnham. They're, they're sitting, it looks like they're sitting in a restaurant having dinner and showing that, that shows their friendship. They, they really do like to socialize together. And, and that was good because we know that they are friends, even though they've had their rough spots with their careers and bumping heads as officers, but they're still friends. Yes. And they were spending some time touring the Louvre together. So now we're seeing that Michael Burnham is taking her shore leave along with Saru in France and being able to observe different art pieces together. So more and more on their relationship together. And I think out of the show, I really like their relationship more than I do Spock and Michael Burnham's relationship. Oh, really? Because they're, yeah. because you can see them T- together more serving on the ship as as shipmates as well as being friends and she wants him to be a captain so badly throughout this comic she's encouraging him to take chances to and, and they want to grow together that's one of the things is that's mentioned in the comic is they want to achieve higher ranks in starfleet together so it's wonderful to see that camaraderie it is the way they support each other and, and so so we go into this uh the story, what we find out is the other ship has been taken over by an Orion woman. That's right. Orion pirates are taking over the ship. So we have a TOS connection here. The Orions have, have been villains in, in Discovery. I mean, they were on, on the, the, on Kronos. We saw. That's right. We did see them there. Yes. But, but yeah, the Orions are always villains, like even on on Enterprise and. That's the series that fleshed them out even more. Yes, and even mm-hmm. but even being mentioned um, on Deep Space Nine, it's mm-hmm. like they they never get any better, do they? They're always they're always uh, raiders and pirates. Mm-hmm. And without spoilers, but we see how Saru is really using his 
abilities as a, as a hopeful captain of taking back the seized medical vessel as well as negotiating uh, with using the discovery as bait with the Orions. Saru shows his his intelligence and and um uh, and he really wasn't cowardly. I mean, he still had his ganglia in, in this, but he still mm-hmm. he, he didn't seem a, a afraid of the Orions. I mean, he he was still in charge of the situation the whole time. And they couldn't figure him out because they've never seen a Kelpian before. What they call him a lizard man. <laughs> right. So they didn't know who he was. Yeah. So that was to his advantage too. Mm-hmm. And so these are the type of things that give us more character development that we're not seeing so much on screen. Yet one of the many reasons why we love all aspects of the Star Trek comics and novels and the entire expanded universe within Trek. Oh, and he did, he mentioned blueberries in this too. I mean, that was good because it goes back to the first season where, where he did, he did have a bowl of blueberries and he offered some to, to Michael. So, so yeah, it's good that they kept that in because, because that's an established part of his character. Totally. Totally. Kirsten Beyer, she's one of the ones involved in the Discovery TV series. So it's great to see her doing work like this. Whenever I think of blueberries, I think of when we were dating. We would go grocery shopping, and you'd say, make sure you get blueberries. And I was like, why? Why do we always have to have blueberries in our grocery cart? And what's your answer? George Decay said blueberries are good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our Facebook group. Live long, and may the force be with you. Nanu, nanu. Nanu.